Good morning, Oklahoma. I hope your new year is off to a great start. This week, we conclude our series on Build Back Better with replacement heifers, and we just title it Your Next Generation of Cows. We operate at a time in our business because of low inventories of cows and more genetic tools in our toolbox than ever before to use in selection and to guide mating decisions than we've ever had. We, we are literally historically unprecedented in our capability to make the next generation of cows more efficient, a better fit to our production environment, be able to produce more pounds of beef per acre of pasture, and cows that serve as the production factory to create those market topping calves. We can use EPDs, DNA testing, and assess the breeding value or the additive genetic potential of animals that have got more strength relative to the traits we want to improve and use in a selection program. We can design crossbreeding systems and make mating decisions to capitalize and create gene combination value and hybrid vigor. Reproductive traits can improve immensely from crossbreeding systems. Depending on when we're gonna market calves, what our objectives and intent are for the set of calves we create, it should guide and inform those selection and mating decisions. A Couple other things from the genetic side. I encourage producers this time of year, as we look ahead to bull buying season in the future, take a look at the performance metrics in your cow herd. They should inform you as to how efficient your business model is. What is the mature weight of your four to seven year old cows? What is the weaning weight of the calves you're taking off of them? What is your percent calf crop weaned? Uh, take a look at all those things and let it guide you relative to where selection pressure should be applied to make the generation better. And while we've tackled these topics more from a genetics and animal breeding standpoint, a couple final questions to ponder. Uh, if you have invested a breeding program into post weaning gain and growth and carcass merit, but you typically sell your calves at weaning, ask yourself a few questions. Is it practical for you to retain ownership of those calves? Are you doing everything you can to document the genetic potential of those calves? Maybe it's a genetic merit scorecard, maybe it's documenting the sires that they're out of to capture the full value of those calves from that next potential owner that's gonna benefit from those genetics. The other part also pertains to management that you can control. If you've got a good vaccination protocol, if you are weaning calves for 45 days and backgrounding them before you re routinely sell at weaning, are you actually documenting that good management so you capture the full value of it. Different things to consider, but remember, your operation, regardless of the scale or how many cows you run, is unique. Take a look at the different components of it and design a selection and breeding program that helps you create cows that maximize your profit potential. Thanks for joining us this week on Cow Calf Corner.